today, we're going to put that cam cover back on. Hey guys, what's up? We're going to get this cam cover finally put back on. The parts arrived and uh, a day early. Thank you, Hammer Performance. Um, I got my Cometic cam cover gasket and uh, it's ready to go on there. Um, and uh, as well as my, my reconditioned cam cover. Here's what it looks like with the, the fresh wrinkle finish on it. So, oh, I got some schmutz on it already. Doggone it. Well, anyways, we'll, uh, we'll just pretend that didn't happen. All right, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing squared away. And um, I've already got all the information I need to get this thing going. Um, for one, the, uh, the bolts all take 110, up to 110 inch pounds. I've gone ahead and didn't, done the ubiquitous dab of uh, Loctite on there. All right. So one of the things I'm going to do to ensure that these cams have plenty of lube on them and remain lubricated during startup is apply some of this uh, start engine assembly lube here onto it, onto each of these cam shafts, and as well as inside of each of the bushings. All right, we've got the uh, cam. Everything's pretty much set up. And we're going to go ahead and put this gasket on now. Pretty straightforward operation. I did make sure that everything was clean and dry on the mating surfaces on both um, the cover and the engine block. I do need to wipe a little bit of this assembly lube off and also give a couple of these bushings a little bit more run it around with each of my make sure each one is well lubricated it doesn't require a ton but you know this is one of those situations where applying liberally is is a good idea you know dry starts are muy malo for engines components and there we go it's on and so now I'm gonna go ahead and torque everything up real quick Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put this on. It only goes one direction. It's basically locked to the cam. It only fits one way. It's keyed. I meant to say, got the lock tight on there, and it takes 53 inch pounds of torque to snug this little guy on. And so we'll go ahead and get this threaded in there. And I uh, Forgot to look up the size of that little nut, so give me a second. I have to fiddle around with stuff. Matter of fact, I'll go ahead and reposition you. So This, it's an eight mil. So the eight mil is what's fitting on there. We'll go ahead and 
Get this guy torqued on there, 53 inch pounds. Let me go ahead and set my torque wrench. Let it go back, work back down from uh, 110. And one thing I need to do is go ahead and take this all the way in so I'm not ratcheting with my torque wrench. Less effective, right? Not really the best wrench to use to do that. Well, wasn't planning on the engine turning over. That kind of, well now it's fighting me. Hold on. Sorry, I didn't mean to bump you. Oh, it's getting hard. It's not, there we go, it just ticked over. There we go, 53. That's a quadruple tap. I got a finger. That little guy really wanted to turn that engine over. All right, so that's pretty much that. Now it's just a matter of putting the, uh, the sensor back on in the exact same position. I think I covered that in one of my previous videos, if not the last one. Basically, I'm, I put marks on here to ensure that I didn't get it wrong. And um, there's already very well-defined indentations where the uh, retaining uh, nuts screws went before and uh, but I they're still there and all I got to do is really line everything up in the exact same place and uh, should be in good shape here so if it is off it'll be off by like a hundredth of a degree that's not enough to cause a problem so anyways Go ahead and turn these down real quick. These did not have any Loctite on them. And I hadn't planned on putting any on there. You guys let me know if you think I should. They weren't terribly tight. They were just good and snug. Basically what I'm gonna do with them right now, I'm gonna line the marks back up where they were in the first place. So that should put me in the ballpark of the factory spec for this and that's tight all right last thing i wanted to show you guys my final prototype for that uh sensor cover and uh this is it so this is um translucent resin is what I had um, but you can see the idea that I'm going for here the idea is to get this metal 3d printed and I've got a vendor who can do it uh, and unfortunately it's a little bit more expensive than I had hoped uh, most of its shipping so, essentially, I'm not sure how many of you are going to be interested in buying one of these because it's going to cost me, um, well, let me put it to you this way, for me to make enough to cover the, the cost of 3D printing this in metal and shipping it. I'm gonna to have to charge like $99 for one of these. And I don't know if y'all are gonna be interested in that. Maybe you're like, yes, definitely, I don't care, that's really cool, whatever. Um, but that's that's the, that's the deal. If you want one, uh, 
it'll have to be kind of like, I need to know that you need it or want it before I order it. Uh, meaning, you're gonna have to buy it before <laughs> I make it. Um, so, let me know if you're interested in it or not. Uh, I think once I get my mind uh, arrives, uh, you're gonna like what you see, especially once I finish it out. The Pegasus is gonna be black, and this service is gonna be um, basically a brushed finish on the surface, right? So it'll just be black inside there. Again, if you're interested in, in uh, ordering one of these, please let me know. Um, I think it's gonna be pretty slick. It'll be kind of a throwback to, I think the X1s or S1s had a similar cover, but this will be aluminum um, and it'll have a machined look. So anyways, that's it for this video, folks. I uh, appreciate the time uh, you spent with me. And I also appreciate the fact that you've been listening to this fan blow in the background. And uh, uh, thank you for your understanding of the heat I'm dealing with right now. So that's that. Until next time, peace out and keep it between the ditches.